Hi, so I hope this text won't be dry. I will try to animate it as much as possible. It is a figment of my work called Occultosophia. It will be about will, the will to something. Because from desire, motive, deed, will is the carrier of a vision. So let us read. Ancient cry. It will be a bit about meritocratic, aritological ideas as well. All that people have in majority is the opinion that something works better than something else, the doxologist. And we're not talking about science here, we're talking about opinions. This ever-ruling opinion that pesters human mind. And for most of the time, it's wrong. If you pitch your song too high, intellectually, no one will follow. If you pitch your soul too high, the birds can sing. A Chinese master. I believe that was Du Fu from the Tang dynasty. Reference in high civilized values expose the ugly masks of the present world when they are truly understood. They make us absorb this reference point to outshine the fall of the humanities in the Socratic irony. Saturnine. What is a Socratic irony? That things that we know, or things that are holy and sacred, that shouldn't be talked about, or written, jotted down, said, are never, nevertheless bound to be said, written down, taught. They must, otherwise we are lost. Against stupidity, ignorance and delusion, gods themselves fight in vain. A paraphrase of Friedrich Schiller, a German romantic philosopher and poet. As the lightnings of Zeus, the great realizations of Vajra or Zig, strike against the mountains of foolishness in vain from Olympus. Mount Olympus was an Orphic term for time, according to Derveni Papyri. Olymp! of the gods is time. Some become the lightnings that fall down to illumine. As I thoughtfully flipped through the pages of anthologies and saw text masterpieces of antiquity, I found treasures from Alcabisi to Cicero to Valluvar, from Cautilia and Kamandaki to Chuang Tzu and Confucius to Han Fei and Zinji, from Marcus Aurelius to Julian de Theurgis to Iamblichus and Julian Autocraton. Not necessary in this hierarchy, not necessary in this sequence. From Parmenides to Posidonius the Stoic, from the Akkadian mythological corpora to the Egyptian sages like Akapere Sonbe, one of the twelve great Egyptian sages from the Middle Kingdoms. From the mysteries of Chem to Orphism to the Eleusinian mysteries, from the mysteries of Scandinavian Hamramir, strength through conquest, to the Draken cults of Greece and Rome. From the Sumerian Mesh, Tree of Life, to the Zoroastrian Avesta, from the Indus Valley to Tibet, I moved back and forth in time, gathering the dew of teachings fought by ignoramuses and fanatics. I moved on when those backward pigs shouted, You're the devil, the Antichrist! I attained friendship with gods, ignoring them, while I was turned into a diamond by the curse of Levantine fates, a bit bedeviled. I attained the freedoms and gifts of the gods, while those pitiful swine were obsessed with jealousy and sacrosanct questions, why not them? Why not them? Why not the little church believers? Okay, I felt like the mother Giordano Bruno who loved this world too much to be extinguished by it, burned at the stake, who fought with pedants and idiots just to be betrayed. He was burned at the stake for exposing nobilitas hidden truths before the lying corpse on the cross and the fat pigs of the Vatican that he accused of being the beast. With brief interruptions in Judeo-Christian theology, I compared parallel thinking that I considered superior in every way, thinking that has been all but eliminated from the de facto curriculum of Western civilization. It is being revived by some and continuously expanded. Yes, I like to go back to ancient philosophies exploit that idea and expand it from the point when it was left, ignoring all the Judeo-Christian detritus. Thank you. So, 
not as an academic endeavor, but as a living teaching from living masters and mistresses high above and in the books and conversations with the masters and mistresses of the past. Non-Abrahamic, heathen, nobilitas, pagan, Hellenic teachings were meant for the intelligent to make them more intelligent. For those who sought a better life, a daimonic, they brought a better life. For those who wanted to learn, they dispelled ignorance and delusion. Judeo-Christian theology was infantile and foolish when compared to the wealth of world treasures it so viciously fought against and degenerated. Do not let them know that we built their world on lies. That our towers, our architectures, our Jesus's cathedrals would look like fools if we preached slander. They are so afraid of veritabilities that it breaks their hearts that the mirror might show the big faces before them instead of holy, sacrosanct, Jewish, Christian scoundrels. What do I with them? I have better things to do. In my sojourns and reflections, I have found jewels of wise advice, pearls, margaritary. They should not only be read, but immersed in the living teaching and internalized. Why did not I grow up in this garb of teachings? Why did I have to wait so long to expand my curriculum and satisfy my insatiable mind, heart and soul to recognize and immerse myself in these teachings? The wondrous knowledge of the world as a disciple of the universe and the world, songs of the past. I have learned that what matters first and foremost is the genius of the person. Genius, that is genii. The diamond is the spiritual character, the ethos, both male and female. Everything else is merely a product of those inner qualities, inborn, developed, sculpted. Outer abilities that arise from potentiality in the reality of circumstances, life and people. It's learned. I have learned that it is better to have an integral backbone among these pineless amoebas. It meant to be consistent and constant with your diamond and bring them to greater dimensions upwards towards divinities. A better sleep you are sure of, but you can strip off all the modern jark as facades of delusions that rob a person of this single veritability of humaneness. The phrases alone with the alone, a title of Henry Corbeck. Corbyn's books on Sufism, El Fihamat, the Bat, the Coleman said, the Wise, Baphomet, the Hitot, the Templars. He was a Sufi master. And there was a Sufi master also that was teaching San Francis of Assisi. Why do you think San Francis of Assisi was ordered to swing like a dervish? To go to Siena because he was taught by a Sufi master, Sufia. Much better. It is to be alone with the gods, the divinities who shower us with gifts, in the style of Ralph Waldo Emerson. After the turmoil of the world, the crowds pulling you left and right, abandon, we silence ourselves. There alone, we alone with the gods alone, beckoning us back to their thrones, calling us back. We see, experience, we are exposed to the greatness of it all. Away from the attention of others walking among the blind men. There they stand proud and confrontational, us surveying the past and the future. There in space is divine and uncanny, an idea of living power and laurel red glory under the auspices of starry heavens. Starry heavens, not earthly heavens. Does that occur to immortals so rarely nowadays? That which we know bring with it the danger that we become accustomed to, the, to a false view of the world and to all that is beyond our perception. We let wonderful things fall into oblivion, if we perceive them at all nowadays. It is a pride in years lived, things conquered, things overcame, a nobility of subtle strength that runs through the threads of our destinies and the strands of ideas that have fought furiously for our minds and hearts in a gigantomahi. Well, well, if I ever developed a lesson for myself, if it unfolded in my earlier young years, unencumbered by worlds of falsehoods, I would be a fulfilled man already. A true man, Verunus, a true woman, is shaped only when the choices and conflicts within are developed and resolved. When they are independently recognized and understood in a discerning manner. When we learn to act, think, judge and decide, all change comes from within, therefore it must be accomplished individually. 
Everything else is my repetition. No virtue or idea, and this, if it is trained only in soldiery regard, do this, do that, because this, that. Nor does it hold, hold good if it is indoctrinated as an automatism in school or in socialization or some kind of religion. It must be resolved by reason, understanding with clarity why so, with meaning and significance, with observation of causes and effects. In the individual and in the group as a whole, the effects it brings. Commodus may be an example, the son of Emperor Aurelius, Aurelion Therion that old beast of the sun god. Now Commodus was trained by the best, but he lacked the nature, the daimon, the inner war of the decision to be anything other than a spoiled yet cultured child. Those who are raised and nurtured by adversity learn to mature wisely along the way. They are the most worthy among men and women. Those who reflect on this inner war are the best among men and women, meritocratically speaking. They have the most to deliver and share. It is therefore the will to play, because the best magicians are those who know the way of the child and develop a paternal and maternal mature mind with an older look like an oak. It is necessary for the Apollyon Isidiac metamorphosis that testify the extent of one's nature and substance to be formed in the future. It is the will to dare. Because no conquest begins without a touch of courage. Like a Hindi mother who once sent her child into the world as a gift and called him a prince. A princess, it is up to him to become one. It is the will to develop. Because no growth begins if one does not want to grow and mature. He clearly defines his ideals. What kind of a man, a woman they want to be in the future. It's not about proposing a profession of some sort. But how they want to form their innermost being, what they want to be as humans, as diamonds, as Agathos Daimonis, as demigods, what they want to be without inflating, without the whole airs about themselves. If they achieve something, to be natural with it. If they achieve something they are proud of, the divine pride, they carry it within. And they are kind to people, they are moderate, they understand their inner core. They don't go crazy about it. It is the will to character by recognizing one's own instincts, correcting and refining the endowments of one's mother, father, and nature. This is the starting point for the ethos of one's life. It is the will to integrity. People who consolidate their ideals in a wiser way become stable in the gift of their characters, ethos. They preserve the vastness of their ideas and imagination. It is connected with ideas and inclusion of all those who form a basis for further acting, thinking, communicating. It is the will to excel, not to compete, not to be jealous of someone, to be inspired, for that is a matter of sport, but to perfect one's talents in the most fruitful of ways, to sacrifice them to others and at the altars of the gods if need be, the whole life. It is the will to education. It is the development of learning and listening, of reflection, and of the critical apparatus that helps to make sound judgments and decisions in life. This is the breeding ground for wisdom and insight. Without the foundations of study, how can one develop wisdom? Without knowledge of people and their ways of life, the movements of the stars and the changing of the seasons in nature, how is one to quickly recognize changeability and transience? How is it to penetrate the character and mind of people, to enlighten them, illumine them, inspire them, and lead them to their inner God so they may discover it for themselves? It is the will to honesty, because between oneself and the gods there is nothing to hide. One can learn the art of deception to protect oneself from the dangers of mortals, stupid mortals for that matter, destructive ones. In honest dealings one reveals only what is necessary. A revealed secret makes us slaves to the secret. So goes an Arab proverb. Honesty and truth have the ability to break chains and release falsehood into the light of the sun. Honest us. It is liberating and makes falsehoods forgotten. And truth, honest us, that is realized, may kill. Truth is either a conventional truth, just like reality or what is agreed upon. A realized truth is a metaphysical truth, which is a personal revelation, sometimes personal gnosis, an actual true representation if it is concordant 
with the metaphysical worlds. The latter is often transformed, unfortunately, into deceptive, illogical religions that vampirize human hopes, souls, hearts, feelings, minds. Now, the true religion is that of personal achievement and realization to which one can be led. That is a religion of refined understanding responsibility for everything. It can never be realized by a sectarian, a cleric, or a hopeless parasite for someone else. The ancient rites introduced into China by Wu and Xi formed the system of Li, traditions, ceremonies, and rites in the Golden Age. They enabled people to participate in the divine. The Eleusinian mysteries were public in the hope that out of thousands, only a few, just a few, would cross this cosmic threshold. The transfer of personal work on divinity to a single institution, a church, a belief system, or imperfect mortals ruined so many. They were persecuted and opposed later, like Master Girolamo Bruno, like Mistress Hepatia. It is the will to authenticity. Gnoti Sauton. It is the stripping away of the false images in which the Eidola, the shadows, revel, and the recognition of the god and goddess within, and the recognition of the gods and goddesses and greater forces, powers, without. This process means going to the spheres of the divine harmony. It is about finding that kinship with the world soul, anima mundi, hecate, and discarding the psychological debris that has accumulated around our minds. It is the will to master, first and foremost, yourself, your mind, feelings, and thoughts. It is a discipline that does not give us over to the monkey of our mind pulled left and right. It gives us a rod of command over ourselves, as if external governors, autocrat and self-ruling, by mind and genius the command over themselves. The mastery and the effort to achieve it make our actions full of meaning and commitment. Want to rule over anyone? Command over anyone? Learn to rule and command over yourself first. It is a lifelong process that does not end with life. It is this constant forward drive that makes us bite our way through that rotten flesh of difficulties and overcome them victoriously. It is a self-directed motivation to carve a statue of one's love that one would put a name upon. It is the Horatius Carmine Exegi Monumentum, I have raised the monument. It is the content and reflection of one's life. It is the will to wisdom or that spontaneous Insight that harmonizes contradictory phenomena in the right proportion of causality. It is all in the direction of great, brilliant resolutions that encompass many means and beings. It is a single sword of insight, that Vajra sword of Manjushri, that cuts through the fog of appearances and delusions to allow bright vision even in the darkest of nights. To order everything according to peace, tranquility, equipoise, and resolve it in beauty. It is the will to govern, which in contrast to the will to power, is the will to commit to people, to unite them in themselves on the basis of self-control, in the service of justice, duty, understanding, the executive respect for the institution, the hierarchy of merit and virtue. Power should be an effect to this, not an end itself. A person who cannot control himself or has no true virtue, either public or personal, but has power, is merely an entrenched sorry figure. It is hopelessly lost to its development and corruption. The will to govern is also the will to surround oneself with people of wisdom. They are the true checks and balances. It is the ability to listen to advice and distinguish the right from wrong, judged by the process and the effects, not by the motives, motives however noble. It is the will to commit or in other words, it is the ability to stick to one's goal and pursue it until the very end. To change it only when the undertaking bears bad fruits, or when its nature is unfit for a particular service or purpose. Or when we are blinded, when we are fanaticized, if a fanatic ever recognizes he's a fanatic. It is the will to respect living beings, as wise people see the codependencies of this world. They may decide to compose themselves among it. Ancient temples and architecture was reflecting both organic and perfect divine forms. They were frozen harmonies in Goethe's language. Modern space management and architecture is frozen cacophony, unlivable. It is standing in a stark dissonance with life and contradicting its very core. 
It is the will to combat. Most importantly, it is the inner war of Gigantomachy. That is the battle of emotions, ideas and cognitions. That is the knowledge of tensions amongst natures and the resolving transcendent union beyond dualisms, within dualisms, merging splintered harmonies that should be turned back into a unitary symphony. Once again, citing Macrobrius Saturnalia, I like to bees that gather nectar from different flowers, yet masterfully blend it into honeys of splendid tastes. It is the will to arrete virtue. That is combat that bolts and polishes the ethos. It is the sword and shield that protects against poisons and defilements, enumerated perfectly, perfectly by the Dharmic and Hindi magicians. With masterful logic, they brought human behaviors to most simple of Dharmas, applying the honey of antidotes those heroes defeat the venom of impurities and afflictions. Arias, the noble ones, nobilitas, in Rome. Helens, civilized. It is the will to eudaimonia, that is, the happiness of the daimon, the attainment of wise happiness, the seeking of a place in this life that most impermanent has its bright sides and methods of attainment, of a tranquil abiding. Despite evident horrors and evils of this world, we are not blinded without closing a blind eye to them, but remedying them. Compassion in Buddhist idea is not uh, sorry, it is active compassion. It is remedying that. It is preventing that. Retaining good cheer and a strong will. It is the will to compassion which is the ability to wisely uplift and understand someone's ailment, thus penetrating with insight to assist in the manner of Babylonian kings. It is not merely to feed the hungry and water the thirsty, a quote from the annals of Akkadian kingly wisdom. It is not mere philanthropy of the endowed. It is the ability to help someone attain his purpose, meaning and happiness, by his own strength, by the means of providing him with the tools and methods that help him help himself, help him educate himself, want him to educate and help himself. So we to dissolve the unfruitful state in the organic state in which he was previously found. It is the well, last but not least, to commit to the divinities, to the divine, which is not a doctrinary moralizing of some pigs. It is to express the divine ethos of various traditions to one's bloodstream, mind, heart, and diamond to be a negotiator, a catalyst, a magician of gods in order to invoke the walks into this world, in order to deserve the name among the immortals, among the stars, and to ascend after the walks are completed. Thank you.